How's it going everybody and welcome back to the Enclave, South Africa's premier firearms education channel. Today I'm very excited to bring to you the review, unboxing, setup, whatever, of the Lee 6-Pack Pro. So after the intro, we'll get into the unboxing and yeah, then we'll get the parts set up, etc. So we'll see you then. Okay, so here we have it with the opened box. Ah, that's gonna be a pain. There we go, easy peasy, problem solved. So, as we open this, we have our Lee Six Pack Pro Kit Manual. This is going to have all of your instructions set up, all those sort of things. Uh, fortunately, with the six pack pro it's actually 90 percent assembled um if not more so yeah so next up we have this little section here that comes out and in here there are a few more things so we have some more booklets these are for some of the other components in here so we have the auto drum powder measure book we also have the scariest thing to anyone with a spending problem like me and this is the latest Lee catalog um, oh my anyways that's terrifying we might actually even go through that at some stage and uh, show you all the thousands that I'm going to be losing thanks to Lee and then finally we have our casing feed tubes and the spent primer tube that is the one with the red cap on the end it was initially uh, announced at the 2023 hunt x and basically stocking was crazy um couldn't actually get one until sort of months after and then yeah here we are so anyways Pretty much, we've gotten our books, we've gotten our case feeding tubes, and our spent primer tube. Next up, we have the breech lock carbide three die set that includes your resizing die and your depriming. It's your yeah, depriming and resizing die the powder through expanding die, and the bullet seat and crimp die. Uh, now a lot of people would want to get additional dies. For instance, you'd want the factory crimp die so that you could separate your bullet seating from crimping. That is the inside of that kit. Um, but obviously that is for your discretion later on. If you decide you want to add those dies separate you can absolutely purchase those dies separately Ugh, polystyrene we're never going to get out of the house if it messes here we have the bottle for the powder feeding mechanism it has a locking system on the bottom that open and closes so that you can seal the system and prevent it from pouring powder when you don't want it to or when you filled up the hopper etc okay what's next let's pull this out so this is your completed cartridge bin and inside here we also have a few different components so you have the large powder measure for rifle loads that is to swap out in your Lee powder measure. And in here we have a whole load more goodies that we will get to. From what I can see here, we've got the rest of the case feed system and we have the primer feeding system. The, uh, 
primer feed tray. So we'll get to the rest of that in a moment. And then obviously, like I said, the completed cartridge bin, there is that as well. And we get to the main piece that we've been seeing all the little extras for. This is the Lee Auto Drum powder measure. So this is, I would say, the second or third iteration of Lee's powder feeding systems. And from what I can see, it is one of the better ones. So there is that. And then finally, finally, we have the actual press body itself. That's why I say this unit comes pretty much assembled. Like what you see is pretty much that and one other component. Other than that, we are ready to assemble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this body out. I'm going to get it mounted into the desk. We've already got the, the holes drilled. And then we will be back to start assembling and lubricating. the. Okay, and we are back. So, as stated, there are very few components here to actually get the press up and running. Um, let us start with this little piece here, which is the small casing retention section, I suppose. In the manual, it shows that you have to disassemble pretty much half the press to install this. Uh, well, actually, you, you pretty much have to disassemble the entire press to install this, um, according to the manual. But with a little bit of looking, I realized that all you have to do, uh, let's make sure that everyone can see this, is crank the press until the case feeder section has cleared the mechanism in the center and then this literally just drops in you line up everything and you just drop it in like that and it is just a friction fit so that is that done and now you have your auto indexing with nine mil or whatever so you would install this if you're doing anything less than 40 smith and wesson um obviously we bought the Nine millimeter Luger variant, as you will have seen from the title and thumbnail, etc. Um, so yeah, we will obviously need to install that. So we have done that. Next up, included in that little packet, as I mentioned, are a few things. So we have the primer feed tray. Super difficult to install. You just go to the slot and you push it in um, of course now it won't just go in there we go it is installed on the press very simply um, <sighs> okay so i've had an idea i'm going to go over what's here and then i'm going to change angles again and show you properly installing everything on the press so here we have the primer feed bar. We have the return spring for that. That comes in the packet that was seen there. This allen key is not actually going to be needed. This is the rest of the primer feed system. So obviously these tubes will be installed in there and then that will get put on the press. So other than that we have the small and large adjusters for your auto powder drum measure auto drum powder measure sorry and we have the lock ring key for the lock rings on the press itself super simple like there's like i say very little in this kit actually to set up so let's change angles again and we'll get you looking at the press and we'll get everything installed. Okay, uh, so there we go. We have proper views of the press now. So everyone should be able to see what's going on. So we take the aforementioned primer feed bar with the small attachment, if you're doing nine millimeter, and we're going to just slot that in at the back here. 
just like that. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. Then onto that, we are going to put the spring. I actually realize it might be easier to put the spring on out of the press. Rather. When you do it the correct way, the uh, little side actually fits better. Anyways, we live and learn. So, pop the big spring up into the top, and there we go. We now have that spring installed. Okay, yeah, you click into place, that's fine. And then when we pull that away, we will keep a primer. Oh, and I'm catching the camera and everything. Anyway, so as you can see, it is working there. We have primer feed. So that is that system set up and finished. Next up, we need to finish the case feed system. So that works with this right here, this little hole. And basically what happens is, okay, sorry about that. So uh, I figured out the adjustment. So the bolt needs to be in the hole closest to this spot, not the hole closest to the big spot. Little spot, nine mole, big spot, bigger than nine mole. <laughs> so then when we come to put this in now, everything will line up correctly. The press also needs to be at the top of its stroke, not at the bottom of the stroke as it was. So basically you're gonna want about a coin gap between the two mechanisms. That looks about right. And then we will put on the final nut. And tighten that down. I will come and tighten everything down with the spanner. But there we go. So we have good clearance there. And there we'll drop a new case. Feed it. Drop a new case. Feed it. So. I'm happy with that. Like I say, I'll come around and tighten everything with spanners, but for the purposes of this video, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then, ah, what to next? I guess the next thing is to install the dies, and then we will pretty much be done. I mean, if we want to be pedantic, we could install these. There we go. Now we have our case feed tubes. Magical. Um, they are little reinforcing clips. You can 3D print for these. You could also buy them from. Um, yeah. We also have the case collator. I don't know if that'll even be on camera. No, it won't. So we also have the case collator that goes on top. But that's not really crucial for right now. That's one of the extras I said we will talk about at a later stage. So, looking at the press, there is something I want to point out quickly. If you want to use something like the Lee Bolt Buster that requires your press to not auto index, what you need to do is remove this station and remove this rod and then your press will no longer index. Um, so it'll basically stay on the same station every single time, keep feeding cases, and it is as simple as just dropping that indexing rod back in and returning that die ring over there, and you then have an indexing press again. So, just a little tip I wanted to throw in there. Anyways, now getting into the actual setup. I feel like these tubes might be in the way, so I'm going to remove them. 
So, station one is where the case feed occurs. That is where we are going to install our first die. So, that is where the decapping and resizing die come in. That is what it looks like. You'll see it has the pin there for removing the primer. So, that is going to go boom straight into position one and with the really awesome breech lock kit ah, super simple to get those installed beautiful next up we have the lee auto powder measure that goes in to station two we can actually just remove one of these maybe not that one um, and that will basically go on to here. So I had a spaced out moment there. I completely forgot. Next up, we were working with the powder through expander die. And yeah, anyways. So fun times with that. So next up in station number two, we are going to be installing the powder through expander die. Now this has a fitting on the top of it which is a funnel fitting we do not need that we'll take that off put that back in the die box and then we will take the the auto drum powder measure and we will screw that into there we go into the second die and that can be installed Again, this will need some adjustment, just like that, just to get that nice and firmly seated there in station number two. Again, I'm going to have to go through and adjust everything with tools. This is just for demonstration purposes. And to complete that system, we are going to simply slot this in. There is a line on the bottle and a line in the thing. There we go. There is the powder hopper system set up. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then installing our final die, which is the bullet seating and crimping die. And that for us is going to go into station number five. I wasn't 100% sure there because I've got, like I say, a few additions that need to come in. We've got a powder check die and we've got a bullet feeder die. But that will give us the space for those. And there we go. In theory, this is ready to start relighting. Um, yeah, basically once you've added your components, you are ready to roll. So if we get everything installed there fabulous and we get the case collator there which is a pain so i might not do it yeah i might just leave it like that <laughs> anyways and yeah there we have it the full the six pack pro really doesn't take that long to set up I mean, with me trying to record and get angles and things like that. I mean, you guys saw how long this video was. That was in real time. So, yeah, really doesn't take that long to set up. And honestly, I think this is the best press that any reloader can buy. I think if money is no object, obviously, there are better presses. I'm not a fool. But as far as bang for your buck, this thing is infinitely upgradable. We're going to have automated bullet feeding and automated case feeding on here within the next couple of months. And then it's really no different from something like an RL 550 Dillon, which costs four or five times the price. So, yeah, anyway, I'm super happy with this setup. Obviously, we're going to get everything dialed in and then we'll get you some videos of us reloading. We'll do tutorials. We'll do reading load data. There's all sorts of videos I have planned for the reloading. 
um, something I've been learning about for years now. I just never really had the resources and the time and things to get into it. But now that we do, here we have it. This was, to my research, the best press for every regular Joe reloader out there. Unless you're a millionaire, this is as good as it gets. Um, so yeah, anyways, hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, we will see you all very shortly. As always, if you have anything you'd like to ask or if there's anything you'd like to say, any comments you have, please leave them down below. Engagement really does help the channel grow. And yeah, as always, see you next time. Peace out.